Hey everybody, my name is Don Humphrey and I'm a technician with PNR Communications and here's today's PNR Communications tech tip. Today we're going to talk all about paging. Um, pagers are something that are still uh, in wide service uh, for fire departments across the country. Uh, I know back in the 80s and 90s it's something that, we, uh, that a lot of people had on their hip so that somebody could get a hold of you. Uh, the original pagers would just go off. They didn't even have a display and you would just have to know the number to call to uh, get the message. Um, then they went with displays, but all that's, you know, gone now that we have uh, smartphones with all the messaging apps and everything else. But fire departments uh, across the country still use pagers, uh, you know, daily and for their operations. So this is how they get notified of a fire call. Uh, a medic run, whatever uh, emergency happens to be, a lot of departments still use pagers. So today we're going to talk about a couple different types of paging, how it works on a P25 system, and some limitations that may uh, be evident on a P25 uh, paging system. Um, so let's just jump right in. So paging is the topic. And let's start with the, uh, the, the old... Uh, Standby, the one that's been around for a long time, and that's two-tone paging. Okay, two-tone paging is simply paging that happens over a channel that's programmed into a radio at dispatch, um, some type of base station or a control station that transmits out, and they send two tones. And it sounds a little bit like this. And there my pager goes off. And alerts and then after that the dispatcher you know hits the hammer on the push to talk button starts talking and gives me all the details that I need so that I can start responding to wherever that emergency happens to be so two-tone paging isn't just for analog anymore it also works uh, uh, in p25 digital and, and in fact we've seen a lot of departments transition um, from the, the traditional analog over to p25 uh, digital paging so when you transition from analog to digital, you may have to make minor adjustments in some of your paging tones. A lot of your tones may be perfectly um, compatible with P25 digital paging. It's just keep that in mind. We've had some departments where we've had to move some tones a little higher, a little lower, just to make them compatible because the way that P25 and the way the digital treats um, the paging tones in the system. So there might need to be some minor, uh, some minor changes. So this guy's programmed to stay quiet all day long unless it receives that signal from dispatch with those two tones that you heard over the speaker. Um, now, usually um, you, heard, you only heard those tones because I've got a speaker turned on listening to them so you could hear the tones, but usually your pager itself is not going to ever hear those tones um, and play them out of the speaker. It's just going to listen as soon as it hears those tones, then it starts beeping, letting you know there's a call. So that's two-tone paging, simple. It's been around forever. Um, most people, are, uh, if you've been around uh, fire paging, know all about that. So one that I've been doing a lot of work in recently um, is talk group paging. Now, talk group paging uh, differs because in talk group paging, we're not sending out any tones over the air uh, to alert your, your pager. All we're doing is we're keying up a radio on a designated talk group and if your pager hears traffic on that designated talk group, it is going to, it's going to activate. It's going to, it's going to go off. So any traffic whatsoever. So that being said, it's a talk group that typically we only put into dispatch or maybe into a fire chief's radio. Um, those are the only places that we're going to put those talk groups because we don't want people just accidentally keying up or intentionally trying to be funny keying up on those talk groups to make your pager activate so if i key up this radio here there we go now traffic any traffic uh any traffic that is set on there activates the pager makes it go off so every single time that that radio is keyed up Again, I just keyed it up again. Um, every single time a push to talk is decoded on that talk group through that pager, you're going to hear 
you're gonna you're it's gonna beep at you and alert you so it's a dangerous thing to put into everybody's hands that's why we typically only put it dispatch fire chiefs maybe or maybe a a, a control station uh desktop radio at, at, at the fire station uh so you can self uh page if need be so it, it's slightly different and the difference uh one of the differences is also is that it's it's just a one-way communication so there's no two-way traffic that's going to happen because i can't talk um i can't talk normally on my normal radio because i don't have that talk group because it's only in dispatch or it's only in the fire chief's radio so there's no two-way traffic we're not talking back and forth on that channel so using talk group paging what usually happens um, and, and especially in the, like the Lucas County system where I work is that a two tone or a talk group page will go out and then the dispatcher assigns them to an ops channel. So they'll say, go to channel three, go to channel four, go to channel five. And then you as a first responder will go to that channel. And then your two way back and forth to and from dispatch will happen on that ops channel. It will not happen on the talk group page channel because that's a one way from dispatch out to you. So that's what talk group paging is. Now let's talk a about some of the differences between um, a radio and a pager. Okay, a radio registers with a P25 radio system. So when I turn this radio on, um, the first thing it does is it listens. It listens for known control channels and control channels are just beacons that are constantly transmitting um, at the radio sites. That has some data that comes down the pipe into the radio. So my radio finds one of those control channels and then it tells the site, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm turned on, I'm ready for action. This is the talk group that my radio is tuned to and then the system will validate the radio. It'll validate the talk group that the uh, radio is tuned to, and it'll say, "Okay, we'll let you have, we'll let you be on this site with that talk group. It's okay. Now you're registered with the system. So now any traffic from any radio that's on any other site with that talk group that's validated um, is going to also be transmitted on the site that I'm on." So for example, on site two over here, if there's a radio that's talking on site two on the same talk group that I just registered onto site one, when the guy at site two starts talking, both site two and site one will transmit. That's all that, that, that that's, that's how we uh, maintain efficiency on the system because we're only firing up the number of towers that we need to, uh, to get the call done. Now, the big difference between radio and pager is the pager doesn't do any registration. The system doesn't even know about this pager. The, syst the system is just broadcasting and the pager is nothing but a passive listening device listening to the frequencies that the system operates on. So I'm not registering anywhere with this pager. The problem that you can run into, and especially if you're using this guy as a scanner and, and these pagers, this Unication G5 is a great scanner. But if I'm listening to a site and I'm listening to, uh, I'm trying to hear a specific talk group at say site two, but there's no radio registered at site two on that talk group, then I'm not going to hear that traffic. Okay, because my pager didn't register with site two and say, hey, site two, I'm here, I'm listening, I'm on this talk group, let me hear everything. The pager doesn't register. The pager is just a passive listening device. So that being said, there are some special talk groups um, that, uh, that are out there. The state of Ohio marks has desi designated some special um, paging talk groups that they will fire up multiple towers regardless of whether there's a radio registered there. That brings this guy back into the fold as being great for paging because now all I have to do is listen to the amount of sites that Marx has designated as, hey, we'll transmit all those sites regardless of registration. If I'm listening to those sites and then I decode my two-tone through here, my pager's gonna go off. So let's look at a couple examples of how registration uh, on a system works and, and what we're talking about as far as maximizing the efficiency of the system. So let's assume for this uh, example that all of our radios are on the, the theoretical talk group, fire dispatch talk group. 
And let's get rid of my ugly mug here and so you can see all four sites here. And let's sprinkle some radios around. So I've thrown around uh, six uh, Apex 6000 XE firefighter radios uh, onto our sites here. And for this example, let's assume that no radio is registered to site two. All right, so we've got radios registered to site one, site three, and site four, but no radios registered to site two. So now let's say this guy up here starts transmitting. When he transmits, now site one fires up, site three fires up, site four fires up, but site two does not fire up. Okay, all four of these towers may be in the same county, but if there is no radio registered to site two, when this guy over here at site one starts talking, then site two is not going to transmit that traffic. Only sites one, three, and four where radios are registered at are going to transmit that information. So it's a very important thing to keep in mind, especially if you're using that Unication pager to scan other things other than your paging talk group, um, because a lot of times you're going to miss traffic. Because right now, if my pager was sitting on site two trying to listen to this dispatch talk group, then I'm not going to hear that traffic unless that dispatch talk group is a special paging talk group that man makes site two mandatory, mandatorily part of that call, if that makes sense. So if we sprinkle some pagers around this time, so this time our dispatcher is going to send out some paging tones, and now we've got our special paging talk group. Once dispatch fires up, now we see that site one's firing off here, site three is firing off, site four is firing off, and even though there's nobody up here on site two, it's transmitting that too because it's been designated by the system administrator that that's a tower we're going to fire up every time those paging tones come from dispatch going out to the field on that particular talk group. So I know it gets a little confusing, um, at times, but it really only comes into play um, if you're using this guy to, to, to scan other talk groups other than those special paging talk groups is there's no guarantee that you're going to get the radio traffic. Now, a lot of times if, if you are in the area where you normally work and there's always radios registered on the talk groups to the tower that you're listening to and on the talk groups that you listen to, then this guy is going to, I mean, you're, you're going to hear that traffic a lot um, and, and probably 90% of the time. Um, but you can run into issues if you get away from that area where there's radios registered to the system on that talk group. You get out from your service area a little bit and you may start not hearing that traffic. So a way to combat that is to use this guy, uh, use an Apex radio as a pager. Okay, an Apex radio can have two-tone decode um, purchased as an option to put in the radio. So if you're already equipping um, your, uh, your units in the field with Apex portable radios, um, you can get the two-tone decode license for the radio, and then the radio becomes a pager, and it becomes a better pager because it registers when you turn it on. So it's going to register to those sites as it travels around. Now, you're not going to have pager, you know, your, your radio going off as a pager, um, you know, if you're 400 miles away from your jurisdiction because most system administrators limit the amount of towers, limit the geographic coverage of talk groups. Um, but pretty much anywhere you go, anywhere close to your jurisdiction, if you're using a radio as a pager, it registers with the system, so you're guaranteed to get that traffic versus using a pager. So again, it, it all comes down to a lot of times personal preference, um, what your departmental budget is. Um, this guy's a lot cheaper than this guy, um, but they're both amazing tools. I carry um, a demo Apex portable radio with me uh, every day doing my job. I also carry a Unication pager with me every day. Um, and I love both of them. And as long as you understand how they're programmed, what's in them, what the, uh, what the strengths and weaknesses of, of both are, 
Um, that's what you need to keep in mind to get through uh, each day and know when problems arise. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it's not a problem with your pager, um, but maybe it's just because you were out of range of a, you know, of a tower that had a radio registered to it. So hopefully I've shed a little bit of light on paging on P25 Digital. Uh, we've talked about the differences between two-tone and talk group paging. If you have any questions whatsoever on any types of paging, um, what the licenses cost for these Apexes to turn these into a pager, if you already have those in the field, um, the Unications, we sell, we, we, we sell these by the truckload. People love these guys. Um, and not just because it's a great pager, but because it's a great scanner as well. So any questions at all, please visit us at pndrcommunications.com. Don't forget to um, click below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and uh, share this uh, video with your friend. And I would appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on PNR Communications Tech Tips. Thanks.